He talked about being upset about the news of how this trade request come, came out. There's a lot of, did LeBron leak it? So-and-so leaked it. Here is what Kyrie, uh, Kyrie had to say and clearly was not happy. Well, I felt like the timing was impeccable, if you ask me. I think that um, how ironic it was that I was on my China trip and how my trade requests all of a sudden just came out publicly. And it was hurtful because I knew how professional I had kept it throughout the whole entire process. You kept and, it very private. And the, the, how strategic it was because I knew that it was going to be madness and it turned out to be like that. What are you talking about when you say it was very hurtful? What was hurtful? Um, it was hurtful to see that um, a lot of the reports and a lot of the things that were happening, there was probably, it was minimal truth to it. So let's turn to the man who did break the story. I, again, this with is, your impeccable timing. This is coded that was language. Sargasm, this by is the way. coded language. <laughs> He's talking about LeBron. He's accusing LeBron of leaking the story. And I can just say, like, I, I don't. First off, on a story this big, you would never ever be able to go with one source. Um, of course, before the story broke, I talked to numerous different people. Secondly, I don't know if Kyrie is being naive, but the concept that a top 10 or 12 NBA player would ask for a trade demand and then be traded and it not become public is lunacy. Like, if he had, did he just expect to show up at training camp for the Celtics and nobody want to know what happened? Um, you know, I, all I can say is this. There were leaks coming out and questions about Kyrie's future in Cleveland during Summer League, which was a good, you know, six to ten days before the story was able to be confirmed and, and come out. And again, I think this is coded language. Kyrie, again, targeting LeBron and Regardless of the actual details, what it just really shows is there's an incredible disconnect between these two guys that, again, a few weeks ago were arm in arm during the finals. I mean, the best way to get traded, if you really want out, is to go public with it. Right. And I think maybe Cleveland knew that. Maybe some of his insiders knew that or whoever leaked the story. When you keep a trade quiet, Cleveland could have just said, you know what, we'll, we'll just work it out. We'll see what happens when they come to training camp. But when you make it public, it forces their hand. And so, in, in my eyes, that was the best thing for Kyrie, it going public. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Because there was a time after it did go public that people thought, you know what, Cleveland could just say, we're, we're not trading you. It, you we, you it can't force us to make pressure. a deal that isn't a good deal. Yeah. But I do see, Brian, when you say, look, once Cleveland does start making calls, saying, hey, what, what would you give us for Kyrie Irving? There were people in other front offices answering his the teammates phone, knew right? his teammates agents knew I mean this is 2017 I commend them for keeping it quite as long as they did but you think you're gonna have trade negotiations with star players in the NBA and they're not gonna become public I mean frankly the reporting on the NBA is just too strong right now try to try to keep something quiet from Adrian Wojnarowski and see how that goes <laughs> <laughs> so there 